Tell me something, Robin, in, in, in semi-seriousness. Uh, I can't remember anybody being um, catapulted to or skyrocketed to instant fame in recent years as fast as you have. Uh, is there any vertigo involved? Uh, do you find it um, a strain? Uh, are there dangers in it for you? Yeah, there's, um, there's certain fears because there's a, you find your ex the freedom of expansion. I mean, the, the ability to move and do things I used to love to do, like skating in Venice Beach in California. I used to love that. That was a lot of fun. And now it's real hard because you get stopped and <laughs> bordering and people will, yeah. sometimes you feel kind of like a, a freak of nature sometimes because you'll stop to make a phone call and all of a sudden there'll be 50 people kind of standing around the booth going, yeah. <laughs> You feel like you're going, I didn't do anything. <laughs> Don't stare at me. <laughs> do you find me repulsive? <laughs> It was do very you, strange. That I find strange. Do you that. dare do that, though, or does that just uh, encourage them to gather more yes, people go, around? It is here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wonder what, what would the effect be if you said, uh, look, I, um, I'm glad you like the show, uh, but I'm off now. These aren't my working hours, and I'm trying to recall no, what I was like before I became... <laughs> I'm trying to get back mm. to being human again. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's hard. The most scary thing of all is when you get a lot of, like, 40 or 50 people in a small, confined space who want autographs or something. And they and they all and you know you can't get all of them and and, and all of a sudden the autograph starts off like love ain't not new Robin Williams and it gets to love Rue William and it gets to mm -hmm. Robin and mm -hmm. if we could only uh, get them to ask for initials you yeah know, just R W <laughs> yeah I tried giving out one time just for once uh, these they had these pictures with uh, Xerox autographs in the back and the kid went this isn't personal enough give it back <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa rejected it. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. I mean, it wasn't personal. It wasn't that contact, that one-to-one -one contact with people. There, there was a, a late celebrity used to use a rubber stamp, which I really? thought was about. <laughs> then he found himself stamping people, going, "Can I?" Can I? Yeah, the dear. This is more personal. Don't say it yet. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Thank you. Kiss the baby. You must have had four thousand. Would you just sign this check? A year oh yeah. Or the, what's some uh, of the lines that you do? There's certain things that people think. Just a blank check. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah, oh good. Oh. <laughs> or uh, or there's, there are people who, well, there really ought to be a course, I suppose, in how to approach celebrities because um, anybody who's on TV is recognizable and it isn't always a pain in the neck to be recognized. No, it's, yeah. um, and when you first start happening, you're going, they, they know who I am. I, yeah. You can start getting tables at restaurants before they went, I'm sorry, monsieur, we don't take your time. Do you ever find it embarrassing when you get this? Uh, suppose I'm a head waiter or someone with an airlines or something and I say, uh, start to ask me something. Excuse me, can you? You want to just stand over there for... Oh, my God. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, never get these people out of here. Uh, <laughs> come on. I have one thing happened. It was a very elegant French restaurant when I was going up. If you'll check this special tonight, it's the poulet avinive. And it's more! Dummy! Dummy! Oh. This brings me to my next point, which is, do you, do you have uh, extensive vocal training? Because w the, the stuff you did the other night in the club would be a, uh, a laryngologist nightmare. I mean, you, uh... Oh, you've got the Only wrong... you knew what was in this cup. I don't know. Thunderbird in a good week, though. <laughs> ah. Do you have any idea what I was asking? I was, I... Oh, we'll go oh. back. Oh, I know what it was. Oh, getting bitchy now, are we? <laughs> All right, I remember, I remember you were asking me. Well, th that's the silliest thing I've, I've heard tonight. Well, suddenly is a wonderful time where... Look. Look up there. A giant fan sucking all the air out of the room. <laughs> we only have a few more minutes. <laughs> At least we know we have one fan present. <laughs> Score now! One to nothing! <laughs> and here's another. And look, too! Yeah. Stereo fan! A la bougie, we a Hey, I bet you're not as big as that one, huh? But I did, I did worry about your voice the other night because you, you stayed on for, I th is it conceivable you stayed on for two hours? Yeah, it was about an hour and three minutes, but that's because it was so much, I was just playing and trying out new stuff. Yeah, it was, it was his opening night at the, at the Copa, which is a um, change from the old days. I, I miss the old Copa girls with the klutzy feet. Oh, uh, we wanted to do a thing, open up with a thing, Dueling Planets. We were going to try to get a hold of eight girls to dress in chorus suits, but with five legs and come out dancing with me at the Copa, but it'd be wonderful, and uh, different legs moving at different times. There is a little a fantasy mine I had on acid. I hope you bear with it. No, there is a... Uh, acid is an island off the coast of... Uh, <laughs> the, the, there, I, there is a Russian clown who does a three-legged dance. He has an artificial leg. And there's some terrific switch at the end. It turns out that the leg you thought was the 
yes, false one is real, oh, and he sticks wonder. a, a uh, ice pick suddenly into the one you think is his real leg. A big laugh follows. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> now, would you say, how do you gauge an audience? Now, you can see these people. W would you say that they're, what, 50% with us? Uh, mostly with, are they warmed up now? Uh, how do you explain the person glowering at us there and saying, what on earth should they think they're she's doing? She's thinking, going, interesting concepts, but when are they going to be funny? I... Yeah. <laughs> Have you going... found that one face can throw you if you catch it in the Oh, wrong? yeah, one time I... Everyone has a story about their performance. The audience is going crazy. It's either, and they find out later on the person either had something. One man was on, just got out of the hospital, was still, still getting off his medication, was actually having a great time, but he could only yeah. laugh like, yeah. <laughs> and I thought, oh, he's really bummed out. And you, and you want to make remarks. Like, What's wrong? Having a bad time? Huh? Look at everybody else's. And you realize he might be deaf. You know? <laughs> yeah. Very risky. Also, you take another chance in your act. You actually uh, drink from a glass that a spectator hands up to you. Uh, have you no fear? Of, of strange diseases? Of pyorrhea at the very Takes least. Takes a man to stand up to herpes, Dick. Stand up to her what? Stand up, no. <laughs> We've used another word that won't make it see the light of day. Oh, right now, Mr. Censor's going, well, his grant is gone. <laughs> you know, and Mr. PBS is going, honk, we'll call you back. Uh, not to mention Mrs. P. Mrs. But I, I, uh... By the way, I inhaled an entire clove. It's the second time I've done that before coming on. You have me at a disadvantage. Uh, my Greek uh, barber told me that you never need to buy mouthwash. Just bite on a clove two or three times. And a clove is lodged somewhere in my pharynx or... If it makes it to your stomach, you don't have to worry about it. You'll always smell good now. You're right about that. That's, now, that's looking on the bright side, and that's what comedy that's really my, is, isn't I'm it? an optimist, you know? Life is so wonderful. <laughs> And that's why I say... When you live I in say, California, you realize everything's okay because one day it's all going to go... Burr. Robin, um, name two comedians who, had they not existed, uh, you wouldn't be as you are today. That's sort of a left-handed way of asking a question, but you know what I'm after. Um, wh whose work should we see in yours? Uh, oh, the people who influenced me are Jonathan Winters and Alan Ludden. In that order? <laughs> There, well, no, mainly Jonathan Winters, but he's, he's incredible. I finally met the him. The humorous part came mostly from Alan. Yeah, but about he taught me poise. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll sue me now, too, Mom. But Johnny Winters, it would, it would be a huge influence. Oh, he's incredible. I finally met him after wanting to, you know, uh, after seeing him when I was like about 10 years old. I remember him. Yeah. We used to drive um, Jack Parr, Jack Parr Beyond going, <gasps> and you know, he go, come on, Jack, cool it, let's go. Let's get a little crazy. Yeah. And he would go off and do madness for, you know, an hour, and they had to stop the show. Mm -hmm. And you knew that when they were, the cameras were off, he was doing things like, come on, let's go, let's go. Yeah. And I finally met him, and that was incredible. W was he, uh, in any sense, disappointing in person? By that, I mean, no. was he not on? He was because on, but he was on and off. Because people expect him to be on all the time, as they probably do you, and sometimes, obviously, he isn't in the mood. Well, he was in the mood the day, the first day I met him, because he was incredible. He uh, yeah. played about 15 different characters, had uh, an old man. The first time he called up on the phone, he said, oh, excuse me, you... <laughs> it's okay in America. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> in my country, right. that means we kill you. I don't know. <laughs> um, Winters was on the phone, and uh, he, or, or no, he wasn't. I on remember. The phone. Oh, wait. he was on the phone. <laughs> I've decided that Winters, uh, at various times, is certainly the funniest man who ever existed. There are times when he can absolutely convince you of that, and, and it may very well be. I think so. And I would like to get to the <laughs> bottom of this, but uh, somebody has taken away all our time. We are done. The Times Winged Chariot has he done has its once again work. flown softly yonder past our window, left us sitting here wondering <laughs> as moments bring us anon. See I you. See you again.